Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. Welcome to my kitchen. This is Kathy Hester of plantbasedinstantpot.com and healthyslowcooking.com. And it's been a little while since we've done one of these live Tuesdays, so I apologize. We have lots of little illnesses in the household and things like that, but we're all better now. Uh, and if you could tell me, just say hey and let me know that you can hear me. That would be really awesome. I see a couple of people are on already. And I think that I should be able to see your name because I'm posting in the group. So today I thought we would talk a little bit about jackfruit. Um, some people are intimidated by it and some people have some misinformation. And so we're going to look at a few of those different things. Hey, Renee, it's so good to see you here. Uh, and I'm glad to have all of you guys here, both if you're watching live or watching it later. So with jackfruit, we are using unripe green jackfruit. So when you go to like the Asian market, and actually let me do an overhead. I think I can let you see it better this way. This is what we don't want. And you can see it's showing a picture of these beautiful kind of fruity um, pieces. And it's in syrup. So we know in syrup means that it's sweet and it's probably ripe. So just remember, this is what you do not want. Um, there are two different kinds, and these are brands. You'll see all different kinds of brands, and at the Asian market, you're going to see multiple languages and things like that. But there will have something, there will be uh, labels in English as well. And so this one says young green jackfruit in water. Young green jackfruit, that meets our plan. In water, it's not in syrup. Doesn't matter if it's in water or if it's in brine. And see how this has a picture. It's different than this one a little bit. But they both show that the outside part of the fruit is green. And what you're seeing is not something that looks luscious and fruity and juicy. Because that's not what we want. We are using this not for its ripe fruit properties, but unripe, it actually kind of has this pulled pork, pulled chickeny kind of texture in a vegan, you know, I guess a vegan outfit. So it's something that we can use and easily um, update some of our old recipes that we might have been using before we became vegan, or even just for your friends for Meatless Mondays. That's always good, too. Uh, and I need, hi Anita, thank you. And you guys, as I'm going along, if you have some questions about jackfruit that I'm not answering, please let me know. Um, also on the description of the, the video, I have a link to my jackfruit info page. And one thing that I just added to that today, because someone mentioned it to me, is someone has a birch pollen allergy and many people that have birch pollen allergies specific could be allergic to jackfruit. So in that article, I do link to a scientific journal that talks about that so you can get some more information and learn how to be tested. I don't have a birch pollen allergy, so I'm good to go. But when we're talking about dishes that we're going to make, um, make sure let's do this again overhead. These are a few from... Um, the ultimate vegan cookbook for your Instant Pot. And I have some on plant-based Instant Pot as well. This is just a jackfruit tinga. So you can kind of see that texture part. And it doesn't have a big flavor, so it's great when you're adding other flavors. Here's another one from that book, which is a, vet, um, a jackfruit ragu. So see how it kind of mimics a meat would do in there, and so it adds a heartiness, which is kind of nice. Um, what it doesn't do is it does not add protein to your dish. So most um, vegan meat substitutes, be it um, tofu or Beyond Meat or any of those things, beans, they usually come to the table with a good amount of protein. Let me see if... Yeah, either one of these has it. So this is saying there's four servings per container, which is about what I would say if I was putting it as tacos or a dish or something like that. And the amount of protein is one gram. So this whole can has four grams of protein. That shouldn't scare you off from this at all. 
but just know that if you feel like you are a person or your body seems to need extra protein to maybe add in some beans with it, maybe have it be a prelude to your meal or have something else there that's kind of beans and rice or tofu and tempeh. Um, if you're not having any problem getting your protein intake anyhow, this shouldn't be an issue, but I know some people really like to kind of keep that together. Um, oh, great. So Sherry made the jackfruit tortilla soup the other day and loved it. And that recipe is on plant-based instant pot. So you can get to it right now and try it. It's really simple. Um, and Andrea was asking, are you, are there any beneficial nutrients in jackfruit? Yes, there is. And let me double check. Um, I want to double check what I wrote in the, in the facts. I believe it has a lot of vitamin C and it has some other antioxidants for sure. Let me see if I can find this really quick. Yeah, it has um, magnesium, vitamin B6, vitamin A, vitamin C, and other antioxidants. So that's what is good about it. Um, it also, I'm assuming, yeah, it has a good amount of fiber, like three grams a serving, which is not huge, especially for the kind of food that we eat. But typically, you're going to be serving this with something else that has fiber as well. So it's supposed to be really good. Most of the vitamins that it has are good for your immune system. B6s are great for, you know, having a little nervous energy and things like that. It has vitamin C. So I find that it's really good for kind of this cold flu season, which if I could, if Cheryl would just work from home, I, I feel sure I would never be sick. All of her people go into work with the flu or with strep throat and other things that she brings at home to me. Oh, great. And I'm glad that answered your question. And what I did is I just did a little research on Google and made, checked a, maybe four or five different sources to make sure that I wasn't just making up that it had B6 in it, since obviously I didn't test it. <laughs> um, and I wanted to, I have another cookbook, the Revised Vegan Slow Cooker. So my very, very first cookbook was the Vegan Slow Cooker, and it had kind of a reddish orange cover. And this is the new version. And one, I wanted to show you a couple, couple of recipes in here too that I use jackfruit. So you don't have to have an instant pot to use jackfruit. And this actually, um, she used tofu to take the pictures, but this is a verde. So it's like tomatillos and cilantro and jalapenos and onions. And you can use jackfruit in this very easily. And this may be the most favorite thing I've ever made with jackfruit. So I made a Thai coconut soup with mushrooms. So it's kind of that um, really nice, rich coconut milk with um, like the lime flavors and the ginger and all the neat Thai flavors. But what happens with the little pieces of jackfruit, so it looks like it's shredded chicken in there just like anybody else's would have at a regular Thai restaurant. And in fact, one of my friends said it was a little bit too much like shredded chicken. It kind of freaked her out. But jackfruit to me doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. And we're going to look at a ripe jackfruit before I'm done with all this. And the ripe jackfruit is on its last leg. So I just saved it so I could show you a couple of things. And we will, you will also notice the things to say, this is not ready to eat anymore. This is too gone. Whereas the stuff that we're looking for, it's harder to get a green jackfruit at the market. It's easier to get a piece of ripe jackfruit. So I'm going to check into it and see if I can find a good source to get some, and then we'll break it down on another live. So one thing I did want to do, and so we've got this in water and one in brine. Either one of these will work in the recipes that are calling for a can of jackfruit. And for a while, there was someone who was kind of popping up every once in a while saying, don't use the one in brine. And he claimed to be a fermenter. And, you know, since food ferments and gets sweeter, and since this was in a brine, it was going to get sweet. Um... And I don't agree with him. Also, I'm not a fermenter, so perhaps there's something else. But when you ferment, you also keep it from getting past an X amount of heat, right? 
So like even with yogurt, if we took soy milk and we boil it to sterilize it, we have to make sure it gets down to a certain point so that it won't kill our live cultures that we might be getting from soy yogurt or a vegan yogurt culture. And the reason is, is that it kills those enzymes, heat, and the canning process is a very high heat process. So I don't see how it could continue to ferment in the can like that. Um, so that's my opinion. There's someone out there who has the opposite opinion. However, I've made dozens of jackfruit recipes with jackfruit and brine, and it does not taste sweet. Um, I've talked to other vegan recipe developers, and they also use it as well. Um, and I think that the only reason I would buy in water over brine is if you're on a low-salt diet or a no-salt diet. Um, you can't always, the water, the brine, and the one in syrup, they're usually like right by each other in the counter in the Asian market. At least there are at Lee Mings, which is the market in Durham, North Carolina that I go to off of 15501 in case you're local. But there's any Asian market will have these. Um, it, I'm trying to think. I've, I've not gotten the cans in Indian markets, but I've seen the fresh fruit. And the fresh fruit can be up to 100 pounds. It's like the largest fruit period. Um, but there are smaller ones too. And so it just depends on what you get that day. Um, the one I'm going to show you a little bit later, I actually got for dollar a pound. It's just a small piece at Lee Mings of ripe jackfruit. Okay, so that's why I would use water versus in brine. And we'll use water right now. So because typically what I do is I will empty this out, strain the water away and rinse it. With the water, I don't feel the need to rinse. So let's look at this, okay? It's gonna be very exciting. And if you have some other questions, now's an awesome time to ask because that's more entertaining than watch me open a can. Perfect, Christy, thank you so much for reminding me to say that. Trader Joe's and Whole Foods has canned jackfruit. And you can get organic canned jackfruit at Sprouts, I noticed the other day. And so let me show you this. So this is what you're seeing. And I'll show you kind of a piece of ripe jackfruit. And again, this is past its, its, but see how different that is? This is like a yellow ripe fruit. And Chris, Dean wants to know if I use the canned fruit, do I remove the seeds? And we can we can talk about that too. Let's see if we can find any. So I'm just going to pour this through here. And so the part that she's talking about, let's see if I've got a ooh, I think I got a seed in here. Okay, and I will show you. This is the seed from the mature jackfruit. See how huge that is, and it's like a chestnut versus this is the immature seed in this young jackfruit. And we can actually smush it. Um, the big ones like this from a ripe jackfruit must be cooked before you eat them, right? So you can't just make this in a dish. You, but there, there's jackfruit curry or jackfruit seed curry that you make just with that. It's said to have kind of a water chestnut kind of flavor to it. Okay, so you can totally eat these, these in the young green jackfruit. Because <laughs> it's like a whole different game. Like, isn't it weird that it's so different one way versus the other, but it is. Um, some people I think don't like them because it's like these little pieces of color, you know, like they're kind of tan-ish. And compared to some of the other things it might look a tiny bit off color, but really you can you can totally eat those. So it's it's just up to you. If they creep you out like they do some people, then take them out. And for me, it's case by case. So also some people will just put this in as is into a dish and cook it. I'm a little 
OCD about it. So I want to try and get these parts are going to come apart, and this is the part that's going to look a lot, and I just squish it. Because seriously, it's super soft at this point. It's, it may not be fully um, unripe if you get a whole one, but this way it is. So I just kind of do that, and that way I know what my dish is going to kind of look like. But isn't it kind of crazy how much that looks like um, pulled meat? Just the way it separates naturally. If I've used um, mushrooms for pulled meat, especially those king mushrooms, the big ones that sometimes use the scallops, you can take a fork. So let's pretend this is the big part of the mushroom. And you can take a fork and go through like that and end up with shreds. This is much easier. So then you're in, you will have this little piece like this that's just kind of hard. Um, there's not really any peel in the canned one. The peel is already gone because the peel looks kind of like that. See, and I'll show you some of the one of the fresh one, but so the peel is already gone. And this is kind of what's in the middle. And I just usually chunk that up like and have it be like little pieces of faux chicken. And it adds... It adds a nice texture, I think, and it makes the dish feel a little heartier. And I do this if um, I'm doing kind of a barbecue thing or not. So this is where the peel would be if it were there. And so again, you could just kind of squish some of that top part. And see, here's another kind of seed pod. Sometimes I'll take this part out, which is the part I find a little discolored, and then I just shred this a little bit with my hand, or once it cooks. It just depends on how particular I'm being that day. So again, and these are the young seeds, and actually you can see a whole seed here. There we go. And this is edible, or you can leave it out. It's totally up to you. But see, it's soft. See, I was able to mush up the whole thing. So it's completely up to you. If you wanted to take that little piece out and still use some of these, if you wanted to get rid of it completely, that's all up to your preference. Okay, so what am I removing? You mean as far as take just then? So let me see if I find another one. Here we go. So some people asked about the seeds, Anita. And actually, this is such a teeny tiny little seed. Please tell me I have a bigger seed. Yeah. So some people, this is a tiny seed, usually they're bigger, don't like to eat these seeds, but they're fine to eat. The young green jackfruit. So sometimes inside of there, there'll be something that's a little off colored, like this piece maybe. But I mean, that's just a personal choice. You do not have to remove it. Yeah, so I'm not removing anything. I'm actually shredding the outside by pressing where the skin would be, and putting that over here, and that's what gives me that cold meat look. Oh, good. Actually, there's a big old seed there. I'll come back to that. And then I'm taking this harder piece, and I'm just breaking it apart a little bit. Um, you can totally do this in the cooking, but I prefer not to. So we were talking about the seed and I found kind of a big old, maybe a couple seeds in there. Oh, okay, no, it's just one big seed. So this is the seed that people are talking about and it's little home. So inside of this, when they're a little more mature, they have this piece here. And some people just don't like the color of it or how it how it feels. The seed smushes up. So I'm going to smush that up there. You can choose to keep this or not to keep this. Totally up to you. I'm just tossing it out right now because I don't even know what I'm making with this jackfruit yet. <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter. So see here, inside of there, I had one of those. They're completely edible. There's nothing wrong with it. And then the part around the seed can also be torn up into smaller pieces. 
Does that make sense to everybody so far? Do you have any questions about what I'm doing? So I would just continue to do this, right, until all of this was done and over here. And honestly, if I was in a big hurry, even that's a seed, I might just go ahead and just let it do, do its thing over here. And then I can come back and shred that kind of seed pod. And I like this um, inside part, which is really the core, to be just a little bit little smaller. But I do like it to be in there because I think it makes it a really great mouthfeel. So let me wash my hands real quick. So I'll get jackfruit all over my computer. Okay, so does that kind of help you guys feel a little more comfortable? You're not even really breaking down. Can you freeze that to use it later? Probably. I have not done that. Um, honestly, if I wasn't talking to you about shredding this, I probably would have it all shredded in five or ten minutes. So I think it makes more sense to go ahead and keep the can in your pantry. Just drain and rinse and um, do this right before you're going to do it, before you're going to cook a dish. Because it doesn't take that much time and it's really easy. So my wrists aren't always 100%, but doing this is just no problem at all for me. Um, if you were having a problem, you could just get maybe the pull pork part off and you can chop up with a knife the, the middles some of them are harder than others um, but see how that kind of tears apart like that and that's what I kind of like to go ahead and add in and that's the harder part in the middle okay so I'm going to show you the, the jackfruit that's overripe and you should not eat it <laughs> so there's lots of bad things about this but I was getting ready to throw it out and I thought before I threw it out I should kind of show you because I can show you a couple things on here so you know the stringy part there that's the stuff here around the fruit pods so the pods that were kind of breaking apart we're not loving in there is actually the fruit and it's surrounded by that kind of shredded part. So when you're eating the right fruit, you don't eat that shredded part. You eat the mature pod that had a big old seed like this in there. <laughs> so the seeds are much different. So this a mature jackfruit versus an immature jackfruit. And so these are poisonous if not cooked so just remember that and that is only again in the ripe jackfruit those little bitty things that we were looking at in the canned jackfruit those are immature seeds they are not poisonous we're going to cook it anyhow but you could in theory go ahead and make like a a, a chickeny sa salad or some sort of sandwich filling with that and it would be okay because um also remember, during the canning process, it is heated, so things are cooked, just in general. So like when you think about crushed tomatoes or diced tomatoes, right, they're cooked already. Same thing with canned green beans and, and things like that. So usually when you're doing it, you're just heating them up, and we can think of this the same way. Um, and another thing, people are always asking me, I'm see the young jackfruit. I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of exactly. It does not taste nothing like the ripe one. The ripe jackfruit tastes like juicy fruit. In fact, juicy fruit gum was modeled after the taste of jackfruit. And if this was um, not overripe, I would eat this and tell you. <laughs> but the the young jackfruit is almost tasteless. Um, there is a tiny little bit of a taste that I can't really describe. It's more of like, it's so mild. It's just a really mild thing. It's kind of like, you know when you taste tofu? Tofu tastes like something, but it also tastes like something mild. 
And so that's why I love using this in like Mexican food, Thai food, um, Italian sauces. So something that's really going to add something because like tofu, you, you can't marinate it. You can marinate tofu and have tofu bring something to the party. This needs to have a party to go to, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we've looked a little at this jackfruit. I'm going to quickly turn this over because it's, it's, so when it's mushy like this, don't eat it. This one, I think, is even starting to get some mold on it. But it is this prickly skin. You can kind of see it. So when it's ripe, it turns brown. This is overripe. Um, and you know that middle part that I was breaking apart? That's actually this core. And in the article that I write, I wrote on plant-based instant pot about jackfruit, I actually put up two different YouTube videos of people breaking the fruit down because you break the fruit down completely different if it's a young green jackfruit that you're going to use as a meat sub versus this um, fruit. And so the fruit one, they had a really great way of moving, getting everything to come off, including the core and the skin and all the little pieces in between. But when we're doing jack, the green jackfruit, we're wanting to have all that stuff. We just want the um, outside peel to be gone. And Donna has a great point. I've heard it's very sticky, a very sticky fresh fruit and a lot of work to cook with to cook a fresh jackfruit, but the taste is delicious. So here's the thing. And I'm not sure why everyone used this word, <clears throat> but they always say to oil your knife, wear gloves if you're working with a young jackfruit because latex comes out. So it's this sticky white substance. I don't think it's actually latex, but multiple sources called it that. And so it's very sticky. Um, I saw some other videos where people oiled their hands in their knives. So long story short, if you're oil free, just get it in the can because I'm not sure that you can break it down without of it without it. It's also very easy. Just these are usually like two bucks two two fifty or under and they'll keep for a really long time. Whereas if you get a jackfruit, you're going to have to do all the stuff. It's going to take a few hours possibly to get that, prepare it. And at that point, you probably could freeze it, Anita. I think that that's a, a possibility. I did notice that people who are doing the fresh fruit cut it a lot differently. And so that is also one of the things that once it's ripe, it doesn't have that white sticky stuff that comes out of it. Do you have any other questions you can think of right now? Because you can slow cook with it, put it in the Instant Pot, you can cook with it on your stove. You could mix some enchilada mixture and bake those enchiladas up in your oven. Uh, there's really, you can cook with it any way you want. And I think it's just a really nice, neutral way to make some familiar recipes. I, I always hesitate to use the word meat substitutes because that kind of rings wrong with people because this is, a, it's a fruit, right? It's just a natural thing. And, but I do think that when you've been vegan or vegetarian for a long, long time, like decades, you do get a nostalgia for some of the food you grew up with. And for me, that nostalgia is not necessarily for the food itself, but the flavors that came with it. So being from North Carolina, we grew up on barbecue. I have no desire to eat regular barbecue. However, it's really fun for me to eat jackfruit barbecue because I can make a really interesting and complicated flavored sauce to go with that, which satisfies that craving in me because I'm not really craving that particular exact dish. I'm craving kind of a memory and I want to take that part of the memory and put it with what fits in my life now. Um, and Matthew says, I've only cooked with unripe canned in water and didn't find it so neutral. I found it had a, a bit of a tropical taste even after cooking. Maybe your jackfruit recipes has extra insurance. Let me put a bigger piece on now. 
This was the one in water. It tastes a little salty. I guess that if I hunt for it really, really hard, I can sort of taste a place where a fruit flavor might become if it ripened up. But it could just be that my taste buds are different than yours. Um, I would definitely say, um, Matthew, to go ahead and maybe try something that has a very strong sauce. Or tell me what you've used it in before. I would think if you used it with a barbecue sauce, um, if you made like the Verdi, which is just basically tomatillos, which have already kind of that um, sour flavor, um, cilantro, and things like that. I feel like those definitely overpowered any taste that this would have. But I really could just eat this whole jar with nothing on it. It doesn't taste fruity to me. It just tastes chewy. <laughs> so I'm sorry that that's, that I may not be the best person to tell you that. Um, but I would really love to hear from you if you try one of my recipes and you find that it works better or worse for you than whatever you used. Because I definitely would be more than happy to put up a little warning if someone does find this to be very fruity, that that's something that they probably want to um, not do or to flavor more heavily. And Sherry says she likes the mouthfeel. I really do, too. And there's something fun and actually because I'm doing recipe development for a new book that I'm going to be doing. And so I've already cooked two things today. And now I'm like, hmm, jackfruit wasn't on my agenda. But I think I'm going to, I'm starting to think of some other things that would be good. Like this would be really good in a gumbo. I also was thinking about maybe making um, some kind of biryani with it. Um, really anything that the flavors you might miss that had pulled chicken, pulled pork, pulled beef, anything like that, which I tend to think is a lot of um, Hispanic food. And the peppers and things like that I find to be just wildly delicious with it. Um, and Matthew said, the recipe you made wasn't one of my recipes. I made, a South, I made the South Carolina pulled jackfruit from the vegan barbecue without a grill book. Basically, they simmered it in the broth for an hour and then sauteed it in the barbecue sauce. Did you make a homemade barbecue sauce or did you buy a barbecue sauce? That can be one thing. Um, if I buy a barbecue sauce personally, and this is totally my personal taste, it has to be smoky. And when I make one, I use a lot of liquid smoke and usually a splash of bourbon or something. You could always, if you had a mild barbecue sauce that you weren't overly fond of, you could always doctor it up by putting um, some liquid smoke, some extra granulated garlic or onion. Um, you could, if you do alcohol, you could put a little bit of bourbon. If you're cooking it, the alcohol will cook off and you'll just get that little bit of flavor because seriously, I think maybe two tablespoons if you're making a huge amount if we were just making enough for this i probably would put in a half to a t to a whole tablespoon so it's not a lot of alcohol we're talking about and anita said she needs southern cooking recipes like gumbo for a class you're giving um where do you suggest it? well on healthyslowcooking.com which sounds like it would be all slow cooking recipes but it's not <laughs> it was my first blog from like, I don't know, like nine or ten years ago. But there are all different kinds of recipes on there. So if you go to HealthySlowCooking.com and use the search box and search for gumbo, I've got a re I, I like it. So it's, it's not a traditional gumbo, but it's a butternut squash okra gumbo that I think is really good. Um, and it uses a traditional roux, which means it's not SOS compliant. Um, I have one in the revised vegan slow cooker that uses kind of a faux roux. If you're trying to do a gumbo in the Instant Pot, if you make a roux and put it all together, it's not going to come up to pressure. So I would recommend if you're making a gumbo in your Instant Pot on the pressure cooker setting, 
to cook it all together, make your roux on the stove, and then add it in while it's on saute. And so for those of you who don't know, a roux is kind of oil and flour that's toasted and roasted together until it's a deep color. And it's fairly important in, um, in like New Orleans cooking. Um, you can even buy bottles of roux, which is really weird to me. Um, if you are SOS free, you can just toast flour without the oil and still get it to give a good flavor and be a thickener. You're just going to have to turn it up a little bit higher at the end to get it to thicken up. Um, once you add it to whatever dish you're using to thicken it up with. If you are one of Chef AJ's people, I, I don't think that oats would work. So I'll try and think if there's something else you could use. You could probably use something like um, arrowroot to thicken it. Oh, Anita, you're from Baton Rouge. I lived in New Orleans for 12 years. And so I have some red beans and rice recipes. I have jambalaya recipes. And some of them are in my books, too. And Anita, you can, um, and everybody, actually, please feel free to join my free private Facebook group, <clears throat> Vegan Recipes, Cooking with Kathy Hester. And um, you can get in touch with me most all the time there. So I try to check in at least every day unless I'm traveling or Cheryl's got me sick again. Uh, and Anita, you're living in California now. Well, we're lucky we live in the age of the internet where you can get anything anywhere, which is wonderful. And I make my own Cajun spice blend. Um, actually, I just had um, one of my online classes this past weekend was making spice blends. And we made Cajun spice blend. We made garam masala from roasted whole spices. It was really cool. And if you're interested in my classes, um, you can buy them for sale after they've been taped anytime that you want. Oh, you lived in the French Quarter. That's awesome. Okay, I'm probably going to wrap it up because I've kept you guys for a long time. And thank you for hanging in there for the complete jackfruit discussion. And if you came in late, don't forget if you have a birch pollen allergy to maybe check with your doctor because you could be allergic to jackfruit. It's not a one-to-one. -one. If you're allergic to birch pollen, you absolutely would be allergic to jackfruit but you are a little predisposed to have that allergy. And please visit my website, plantbasedinstantpot.com, to get a couple of um, jackfruit recipes. I've got the tortilla soup. I've got a, um, a white chili with jackfruit. And then I also have an orange lime um, chili jackfruit that's like um, a Hispanic dish for maybe like tacos or burritos or something like that. Oh, Chrissy, you're in Charlotte. I'm in Durham. We'll have to meet up sometime. Um, we're about due for a Charlotte run to go see Ikea and whatever mysteries they have in the store now. So if you have any other questions about jackfruit, feel free to leave a, um, a question under the video. Leave a question on the jackfruit page on plant-based Instant Pot or come on into the Facebook group, um, Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester. Oh, and Sherry said she's made the white chili and she likes it. Oh, Christine, thank you so much for coming. Well, you guys um, have a wonderful rest of your week. If you make something with Jack Group, please send me a picture or put a picture up on one of the um, places that I hang out, either one of my Facebook pages like this plant-based Instant Pot one, healthy slow cooking one, anywhere. I would love to see it. And you can tag me on Instagram. And that's about it. Have a great day and enjoy cooking with Jackfruit.